Hello student, in this video we are going to study regarding the requirements for the plant tissue culture technique. So, we know that plant tissue culture means in vitro cultivation of either a cell, tissue or an organ aseptically on uh, under control uh, environmental conditions on a nutrient media where the nutrient media is the first and the foremost requirement for the plant tissue culture <coughs> technique where this we know that the plants which are grown naturally that utilizes the nutrients from the soil for their growth and the development and also they utilizes the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere which is used as a source of a carbon where they convert this carbon into the carbohydrates by the process of photosynthesis and these carbohydrates are further utilized as a source of energy by the plant cells. So when the tissues or the cells these are grown on an artificial media it also need same nutrients as that of the naturally growing plants. So here the nutrient media it is nothing but the media which contain the nutrients which are required for the growth and development of the plants. Now we will see what is exactly the composition of the nutrient medium. So before start with this comp composition, uh, this composition is generally depends on what kind of a explant it is going to be used for the culturing. So it depends on the part of the plant that is used for the plant tissue culture technique. Then it also depends on the particular species of the plant that is used for the culturing purpose. Okay, so as per the uh, species going to be varies, the composition of nutrient media is also going to be varied. As well as it is also depends on the purpose for which the plant tissue culture technique is carried out. Like this plant tissue culture technique, it is either carried out for the regeneration of the plantlets or that can be used for the uh, formation of a secondary metabolite. So on that purpose this composition of the nutrient media is going to be vary. While the proper composition of the nutrient media it is going to determine the successful establishment of explant where this explant is responsible for the regeneration of the plantlets. While this proper composition is also responsible for the in vitro growth of the plant cell. So if the proper composition of the nutrient media is used, then the proper growth of the plant cells is going to be occur uh, in the plant tissue culture technique. So now we will start with the organic nutrients. So organic nutrients such as vitamins, amino acids, and other such organic supplements these are need to be added into the nutrient media where the first one that is the vitamins so we know that the vitamins are required for the normal growth and development of the plant cell we know that vitamins are normally synthesized by the plant cell but in tissue culture vitamins are not synthesized in a sufficient quantity hence there is a need to add vitamins in the nutrient media for optimum growth of plants in the plant tissue culture technique where the vitamins like thymine, nicotinic acid, pyridoxine, calcium pentothenate, ascorbic acid, biotin, riboflavin, folic acid like these vitamins these are essential ingredient for the growth of the plants while the other organic nutrient is the amino acid and it is added as a substitution or augmentation of nitrogen supply where the plant cells can absorb nitrogen which is present in the amino acids. Hence the amino acids like glycine, arginine, cysteine, glutamine and tyrosine these are added as a substitute for nitrogen while the other organic supplements such as natural substances or extract these are also added in the nutrient media which includes corn milk, coconut milk, yeast, malt, organic juices etc uh, which are also added for the growth purpose in the nutrient media. 
the second important component of the nutrient media is inorganic nutrients where these inorganic nutrients are added in the form of inorganic salts where it includes macronutrients as well as the micronutrients where macronutrients are nothing but the nutrients which are required in the large quantity that is they are required more than 30 ppm that means parts per million or in a quantity of 0.5 millimole per liter where the examples like nitrogen phosphorus calcium potassium magnesium and the sulfur like nitrogen it is important element of the nucleic acid and that is required for the growth and development of the plant cell well the magnesium it is acts as an a cofactor for the enzyme the sulfur it is used for the protein synthesis calcium it is used for the cell wall formation and the calcium magnesium potassium these are required for the cell metabolism so these are the different macronutrients these are required to be added into the nutrient media now regarding the micronutrients where these are the nutrients which are required in the small quantity and that is required in the concentration less than 30 ppm the examples like ferrous iron iodine nickel boron copper zinc etc where these are used as an a cofactor for the synthesis of different enzymes so this is regarding the inorganic nutrients which includes macro as well as some micronutrients then the third source is carbon source where it is added in the form of a carbohydrates the examples are like glucose sucrose maltose galactose and the starch of which sucrose and glucose these are commonly used as a source of energy while lactose maltose galactose and starch these are rarely used where the sucrose in the concentration of 2 to 5 percent it is used as a source of a carbon and it is found that during the autoclaving or the sterilization process this sucrose get hydrolyzed into the glucose and the fructose as we know that sucrose is a disaccharide so it get hydrolyzed into the glucose and the fructose and these are used for a growth of a tissue the plant cells in the culture first utilizes glucose and then they utilizes fructose as a source of a carbon then the fourth source is a plant growth regulators where we know that these plant growth regulators are responsible for the growth of the plant the plant growth regulators like auxin where this auxin it is responsible for the cell division and the cell differentiation where this auxin is responsible for the root formation and we know the examples of this auxins that is indole acetic acid indole butyric acid naphthal acetic acid and 2,4-D that means 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid the second example is cytokinin where the cytokinin these are responsible for cell division as well as shoot formation where the kinetin zeatin benzyl aminopurine these are the examples of the cytokinin where in the nutrient media if the concentration of auxin is increased then it is responsible for the root formation and if the concentration of cytokinin is increased then it is responsible for the shoot formation so this is very important in increased concentration of auxin is responsible for the root formation and the increased concentration of a cytokinin is responsible for the shoot formation while right? the other plant growth regulators such as gibberellin abscisic acid ethylene these are also added in the nutrient media then the fifth requirement is solidifying agent for the preparation of semi-solid or the solid tissue culture media solidifying or a gelling agent are required that provides support to the tissue growing in the static condition where agar used as a solidifying agent where it is a polysaccharide obtained from the seaweed and is most common used gelling agent in the plant tissue culture where this is used because it is not going to react with the media and it is not get digested by the plant enzymes and also it is stable uh, during the culture temperature. So the agar in the concentration of 0.5 to 1% in the medium 
can be used to form the gel where gelatin is also used as an a gelling agent at a 10% concentration but generally not used in tissue culture because gelatin melts at a low temperature and consequently the gelling property will get lost therefore agar is commonly used as an a solidifying agent while regarding the ph so the ph in between 5.6 to 5.8 it is maintained and it is the best ph for the growth of the plants in the plant tissue culture where if the ph is above 6 then the medium it will become hard and if the ph will be below 5 then it does not you know, allow gelling of the medium therefore the ph should be maintained in between 5.6 to 5.8 and all these conditions should be maintained before sterilization while the aeration of the tissue culture is also important where the culture media is periodically mixed by the stirrer or via program shaker to keep up the best possible aeration of the culture tissue which is additionally an imperative part of this culture method also the plant material it is an important one that is nothing but the explant which is an any piece of a plant that is taken for the plant tissue culture technique for the growth and the development so this explant is properly selected and also uh, its sterilization is also carried out uh, in a proper way and then it is further utilized in the plant tissue culture technique so this is regarding the general requirements for the plant tissue culture technique please like and share this video if you are new to my channel then subscribe my channel to get more videos regarding this pharmacopoeia subject thank you